Hey guys and welcome to CPL Fever. It's your host Jack and Andrew Murray here and today we are joined by Peter Chalet, the center back for the Halifax Wanderers and I'm super excited to have Peter on because he's such an integral part of the Halifax Wanderers and we've chatted a bit throughout uh, the season but we haven't talked with him like this for about a year so I'm super excited to do this and let's get into the video. How's it How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing, Jack? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you yeah. on again. We haven't talked to you in like around a, like a year. Like we haven't sat down like this, and I'm super excited to do it again. I'm super excited too, man. It's been a year, yeah. It must have been like around a year last time we talked on the phone, right? Yeah, because that was before the island games exactly. and like, yeah. Good stuff. But, yeah. So, how have you been? I've been good. I can't complain. Um, you know, off season has been long, but uh, yeah, just just uh, doing dealing with life. You know, I, I've worked some jobs out west and collect some new experiences and uh, got away from football a little bit, which is also nice sometimes <laughs> uh, to connect with the friends again and have uh, I have a couple of very good friends over there. So uh, no, I had a very good time and now I'm back here since January and uh, been working, grinding getting back to full fitness and hoping that we get a season sometime soon. Yeah, David Klanikin had said that hopefully we'll, it'll be like in May sometime. And yeah, I saw that you went out west. So that was good? Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, I love it out west. Uh, That's good. I went there a couple of years ago to play for the Highlanders. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time back then. And uh, a couple of my really close friends from university live out there now. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed seeing them again for a little while. Okay, nice. Yeah. Did you uh, do some coaching when you were out there? or? No, no. I actually did a, a, I worked construction and roofing when I was out there. Uh -huh. And uh, I kept fit, of course. I have a good friend there. His name is Sean. Uh, he's like a personal coach uh, for football and fitness as well. And uh, we worked with him a lot. So Corey and I stayed fit when we were out there, but uh, also, also grinded and, and uh, put some work in, yeah. Oh, so you've been spending time with Corey then out there? Yeah, Corey was out there with me. Yeah, okay, we cool. Together. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And do you do, um, I'm just curious, because I know some football players do uh, do yoga. Do you do yoga? I used to do yoga more. Right now, not that much, but I probably should pick it back up because I'm starting to get sore now. Uh, yeah. But I like it. I, I really see the benefits in it. Yeah, my soccer academy, because um, like, Oh, like a couple of months ago, they've invited me into the like top level, top tier of the program because you have to be 12 to be there. And since oh. I just like turned 12 like a couple of months ago, now now that I was allowed in it, and like they have us do yoga and stuff like that, like twice a week. Okay. So yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I didn't do it that much before though. But actually, what's okay. nice is I'm like, I my mom and dad like did it before, so like they have some yoga mats, so. Nice. We just had so to take some stuff. Home. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So you guys been over the over the holiday times over yeah basically since last time we talked. Um, it's been it's been pretty good here. You know, uh, yeah. Nova Scotia's had it had it you know relatively easy I think for a lot of places, and yeah. you know to be honest I mean my philosophy is there's like you know different seasons and this is just a season for you know spending more time at home and just you know, not seeing as many people and that's just the yep. way things are for a while. So that's so, a good way to look at it. Yeah. So it's been pretty easy for us to, uh, to roll with it. Um, you know, it was, it was difficult when, you know, the soccer stuff got canceled. Yeah. Cause, yeah, uh, of course, cause you, you Jack's soccer stuff got canceled. My soccer stuff got canceled. And then you find like you're not doing as much and I don't know. Right. It's, it's just, that kind of keeps me balanced as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah though, I, I think that. we found it easier because you guys work from home and we, uh, like, you worked from home before COVID and I'm homeschooled. So it was, okay. I think it, for the transition for us, it was a slightly easier. Yeah, yeah. No, I bet. But yeah, I, I know that feeling when, when the football is just getting pulled away from you. You just find yourself sitting at home all the time. And that, that one thing that gives you the balance is just gone at that point. And yeah, last year was hard. It was tough. So I'm just happy that we're able to train now and be on the team with a full, with, uh, be on the pitch with a full team and all that stuff because it's, I mean, if you look at the other provinces, it's not a given right now. Most of the teams right. are not even allowed to train. 
Well, how, I mean, how difficult is it with that huge, massive, long off season uh, and, and the uncertainty, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Honestly, for me personally, it's been, it's been tough just to keep my mind tuned in because all you want to do as a, as a football player and you, Jack, know, you, you know, too, Andrew, it's just, uh, you want to play, you want to play games, right? Like, okay, you train, you train, you train, but you train for a reason because you want to play games, you want to be in competition and you want to put yourself out there so other people can see you and look at you. And now in the last year I've played all, I mean, I can talk for the whole team. Uh, it was 11 games we played at the Island Games. So 11 games is in a normal season. That's that's maybe with Cup and whatever. That's maybe what we cover in, in two months. And that's what we have spread out over a year now. And uh, it's tough. The one thing, the competition, because that's really that's really what's missing for me, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about the uh, what about the new season? When uh, do you, do you know anything about details or? I know just as much as you guys do. I would yeah. love I'd love to break some news to you, but uh, no, I don't know. Um, what I I mean, they put that date out a while ago, May twenty second. That's unrealistic right. by now, I think. Um, I think what I've been hearing is maybe late June, beginning of July. I think they've been looking at Canada Day maybe for a start day. But what the format is going to look like, I don't know. If we'll be able to to travel or if if they maybe, I don't know. I, I heard that they maybe want to try to go like east and west and bring the Ontario teams out here and then the western mm -hmm. teams maybe out on the uh, Vancouver Island play like hello round robin and then a final or something i don't know but i'm pretty sure there will be something so i'm just waiting for for news right. yeah the canadian premier league was able to do something last year um so most likely yeah. they will be able to do something this year yeah, yeah hopefully a so full se yeah hopefully a full season but if it's just a tournament i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> so on brighter news, um, at least Frankfurt uh, is uh, is doing very well in the Bundesliga. Yep. Can't wait to see them play Champions League next year. I don't want to jinx it yet, but it's looking good. Yeah, that will be exciting. That will be exciting. <laughs> no, I'm I'm pumped. I'm pumped. They're really looking good. But now I've seen today that uh, apparently their coach is going to leave for next year to go coach uh, Mönchengladbach. Okay. Oh. That's what I just seen now. So they are apparently going to part ways. I, I really liked him, but uh, I don't know what their plans are. Maybe they have someone else already. Or we'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, usually the coaches leave when the teams are doing bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but, so the world of football, eh? It's, there's yeah, always going to be some know. uncertainty somewhere. Exactly. So what about the, the, the PFA Canada? Um, can you tell us a little bit about, about that and what that's all um about. so i've only got into it uh, a little bit because uh, well like every team has like a representative and i was asked to be there but i just gave it pass it on to mateo's actually doing it for us because uh, you know i'm coaching and i have a couple other things and i don't want to commit to something when i can't 100 percent really commit to it just right except our schedule but um they're involved with uh, dan kirk is his name or crook uh, he's a lawyer uh, that's working closely with, uh, I think, Marcel de Jong and Issei were the ones who really founded it at the beginning. And it's it's coming together now. I mean, they had the, the annual meeting a couple of weeks ago with the votings on vice president and, and some other members of the board and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it seems like they're, they're starting to make an impact and they got acknowledged by Fifth Pro, which is like the, I think, the global... I don't know how to say, maybe ambassador for, for unions, uh, for professional football leagues. And so now they'll be able to put more pressure on the league to make sure or to try to, to make them acknowledge us as a union so we can actually negotiate with them and, and get more benefits for players and, and all that stuff. Right. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I think the, the, the people in charge are, are very professional and very, very good. So um, I'm sure that the, the outcome will be great. And I think it's important to have that, you know, the players should have a voice and should be able to raise their voices if they have to. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's important. Do you think other countries yeah. or other countries have, I mean, 
part of it's because it's such a, a young league. Like other countries have yeah. have better representation because they've they they're more established with uh, professional teams. Yeah, for teams. sure. Okay. For sure. I mean, uh, you can see it in the MLS. Uh, in the MLS, the uh, well, they have the. I think it took them quite a while actually to to get the union um, acknowledged by the league. But once they did, they were able to get minimum wages and and even raise those over the years. So make sure that the players are actually taken care of because uh, you have you, you can never forget it's it's also a business side of football for the clubs, right. right? The clubs are trying to make money. The league's trying to make money. And yes, of course, the players are trying to make money, but you know, if everyone's trying to to scoop out of that big pot of money, you know, and the league has more power, or the clubs have more power than the players, then you never know if it's going to be fair. But uh, right. I think I think the league right now, for what the league is and for how old the league is, I can me personally, I can't complain about anything. I think the Wanderers do an exceptional job as well in communicating with us and. and um, giving us opportunities off the field as well, if it is in the community or for me coaching now. So um, there's lots of other things that, that I consider too that are coming with with being a professional here. And uh, yeah, I really like it. So I have nothing yeah. to complain about at the moment. Yeah, the Wanderers are great and so is the league. Um, and you just mentioned coaching. So how has that been going for you? I really enjoy coaching. So I came back here in January from the West Coast and um, I started, well, I had to do my two weeks quarantine. And then I started coaching right away with County United, the under 17 AAA team. Um, got into it very quick. We train, usually train twice a week and then have games on the weekends. Uh, we're at the winter season, right? The indoor season that you played in as well, I'm sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was so so the, the, from the results. It, I mean, you win some, you lose some. But uh, for me, the most important thing is that I've seen development in, in the kids. And uh, I have a very good uh, coaching buddy with me. Colin Sweeney is his name. He's he's a really good coach. Uh, he's been coaching for quite some time in Halifax and in, in, in the area. And um, we get along super well. We have a good group of lads together. And uh, yeah, no, I really enjoy it. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward now to go outside and play left on the side because seven seventy seven is only well, it's not the real game. I mean, it's fun and it's it's, it's nice, but. I'm, I'm looking forward to see the lads play outside on 11 side pitch with a bit more space and and uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, this is going to be the first year that I go into 11 side, so I'm super excited. We start um, talking about like formations and that step on right. the, on April 19th. On April 19th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so looking forward to that. That's going to be a, a transition. I remember when I first had to step on the big field, I was I was just thinking, oh, that's a lot of ground to cover for me, especially <laughs> as a defender. <laughs> but you'll get used to it quick. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, and also I have a couple of friends on county, so it's always fun to play against county. Yeah, that's great. Now, when you moved to 11 aside, weren't you still playing striker? Uh, yeah, I was playing striker, like 10 striker at the time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, just in general, like I looked at the picture and I was like, Jesus, how am I, how am I supposed <laughs> to run from box to box here? <laughs> With yeah. the short legs, if you have to run up for a corner or something, or back for a corner, it's like a half marathon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I'm now looking at like, the, at like this big field, I'm like, wow, this is going to be a lot of like ground to cover. Yeah. But you know what's good? You'll have more time on the ball. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Bigger and field. You more can take advantage of that. Exactly. You can use it to your advantage if you know how to. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it because it should give me a, mo- a bit more time to like thread passes through like exactly. the lines. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy 11 aside too just because, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just so much fun to, uh, to play. Yeah. You're not switching as much, so. Yeah, it's good. yeah, exactly. It's it's just very fast paced. Everything on the seven aside in the indoor league, because you right. have to be barely have any space, and uh, you know the first touch. Sometimes if it, if the first touch isn't good, you're already in trouble. That kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, and so we were. Uh, yeah, outside, so we were, it's just a bit easier. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like last night I was playing the uh, the top team in our league, and like if the touch was just a little bit off, they're so fast exactly. and they're just they pounce yeah, right yeah. on it. So um, yeah, but it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> so in coaching, I mean, what's the, what's, 
what's one thing that you're looking to develop, right? Because you're, you're in, a unique, in a unique position having been a professional player and you kind of came up and, and went through your own um, you know, development as a player, but now you can kind of see it like what these players need to, you know, to make that transition from where they are mm-hmm. now to where you are as a professional. And maybe you have some different insight on you know, what they should be working on. Um, so with my players, what I've been telling them a lot is that, uh, you know, the three hours a week that we have on the training pitch are not enough to, to get better. Like you can't come and expect your touch to get better in those three hours because I'm trying to pass information on in those three hours that you're supposed to take home and then work on stuff by yourself. Because yes, for example, when I was that age, I, I trained five, six times a week and then automatically you'll sharp my up. But that's not the case right now here, and I know with in the winter the, the the pitch time is limited and all that stuff. So whatever it takes, go kick a ball against the wall. Just make sure, like, work on your touch, be, make sure you're sharp, work on your passing, all these kinds of things that you have to bring into practice to raise your standard in the practices. And once they started doing that, it got better. Like, the fundamentals just to sharp them up and really be able to take a touch, make a quick pass, make quick decisions. Everything else just goes smoother after that because once you're comfortable on the ball, you're more comfortable. You can lift your head, you can scan the area, you can see how much pressure you have, how much time you have. Um, you can see runs that that your, your teammates make, and uh, that's for me is one big thing. It's just you have to feel comfortable on the ball first, especially in a tight space. Is even more in the seven aside um, to be able to keep possession and, and keep the ball moving for your team, and. Um, then what we now what we start gonna start working more and more on is uh, just the shape because we're gonna start going outside the shape of a back four plus uh, maybe one or two holding midfielders in front of them. Um, I mean, for me as a defender, the defense is definitely a big part of of the team. So I want them to be solid and uh, yeah, I just want them to understand like how to how to shift together, how to defend together, how to cover each other. All those those little concepts that are really easy if you, if you think about it, but the, it just takes time and practice and, and memory to to really um, get used to it and and like almost automatically do it in a game without having to think. Mm. Uh, those kind of things I think are important for me. And um, you know, of course, there's always the, the little possession games, uh, when to speed up play, when to keep possession, when when to be patient and waiting for the right moments to to thread balls into into the other half or start an attack. So I'm honestly there's a, a wide wide range of, of things I'm I'm trying to to pass on to the lads. But I see a lot of improvement and and uh, most of them are quick learners. So I'm I'm really happy and excited to to keep going with that group. That's yeah nice. and and I'm sure they have a great coach in you and and yeah it's um like you said uh I'm so excited to see them go out to 11 aside too because that's going to be really fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. One, uh, one inter- interesting aspect of, of seven aside that, that probably is good for developing as a defender is with seven aside, the other team can kind of rotate through positions quicker and kind of move over to the side. So I think that playing seven aside helps you as a defender have to communicate to kind of you know, tell the guy, oh, you got to drop to mark him or, or, you know, you release that guy that's near you and you, you have to go to, uh, to that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's much, much quicker. You just pass players on much quicker and having to cover the next one because it's so quick movement and it's short distance, everything. Uh, yeah, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. I think, I think it's good. Like, there's a lot of good things you can take out of seven aside. Um, like I said, because you are under pressure a lot of times, and you have to make very quick decisions because it's so, so short. If you make like one, if you miss a decision, you might already concede a goal. It doesn't matter if you're in the midfield or on the defense. So if on the big pitch, you, you maybe, uh, you know, if, if you have a quick uh, defender behind you, he's quick enough to recover if you make if you make a mistake. But on the small pitch, that's not possible. Then you have to hope the best for the goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, seven aside definitely has a lot of positives. Like what you said, like thinking quicker and also like having a good touch because it's just so fast. Like the movement and exactly. everyone's always there and tight spaces. Yeah, yeah, it's super quick. 
but it's good. It's good. I, I, I actually enjoyed it back in the day. We, we didn't play seven aside in Germany, but it was always like a period of like three, four weeks over the winter time where we went indoor and we played futsal. So it's like five aside, I think, maybe six with the keeper. And we used to go on big tournaments and stuff, and I actually really enjoyed that. Yeah, it would have been fun to play foot, like futsal like in, yeah. a to- in a tournament. Yeah, there was some fun tournaments back then. Yeah, that was good. Good times. And uh, I wanted to talk a bit about like your other projects um, as well as like your marketing company. So could you tell mm-hmm. us a bit about that? Because like it's relatively new. So yeah, so that was born out of an idea. Well, I have a marketing degree and um, I was basically just thinking, uh, you know, I'm always I'm, I'm just a very active person in general, I think. Uh, and, you know, the last two seasons, um, I just found myself with a lot of spare time as a football player, you know. Uh, you come back home around noon, some days maybe a bit later if you have gym. But then you have, you're free for the rest of the day. And um, I was just thinking, what could I do with that spare time? So I was thinking that that might be a, a good idea. And I, I enjoy, um, you know, doing all that, that marketing stuff, that digital. Um, I create, like, content for, for companies or whatever it takes. And um, I'm still learning myself a lot, you know. It's also like a learning experience for me, where I just get get hands on, uh, try to do some stuff. I helped some friends out and and had a little thing going over the Christmas time with that uh, with the like local giveaways. And uh, yeah, yeah, I actually really enjoy it. But um, at one point, I had to realize that right now, small businesses are re- not really looking to spend a lot of money on on uh, outsourcing their marketing. Let's put it that way. So um, I'm still in it, and and I'm I'm happily helping not anyone. But uh, uh, I think I'm just gonna have to wait until COVID clears up a little bit and businesses are doing better again until I, I actually can uh, try to make some money with this. But <laughs> like I said, it's also a learning experience for me, and I I enjoy doing it. And um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep growing it and keep doing it. See where it takes me. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of um, my background as well is yeah. you know doing uh, doing marketing online so I can definitely understand the the appeal of it and um, we actually interviewed uh, Skylar Thomas who played the first mm-hmm. year in the CPL and then he moved to the USL and he came up with with his own product called kick deck and you know he kind of mentioned the same thing and and I can kind of see some similarities between being a soccer player and being an entrepreneur in terms of you know, there's, you have some free time, you have a lot of latitude over your decisions of where you're going to spend your time and what you're going to do. There's uncertainty there. Um, do, do you see a lot, of, a lot of similarities between being a soccer player and where you have to find your own career and negotiate your own contracts and, and being an entrepreneur? Definitely, definitely. I think as a football player or ent- entrepreneur in general, you have to be very, um, like, confident about the decisions you make and um, you know yeah definitely I can see the similarities because you're in charge of your own career I mean yes in the end I'm an employee for the Wanderers if you want to put it that way but they can't tell me what what I have to do at home like like it's still the same as back in the day like I have to put the work in before I come into preseason I have to make sure that I arrive because I want to be better as a football player right so like I'm of course I'm playing for a club but in, in the end me, my, I'm my own, my own asset in that career as a football player and as an entrepreneur. I mean, your own company is your own asset, so it's it's definitely very similar. Yeah, and you worked. Um, we're familiar with with Carlos uh, Benitez, and you worked with him yeah. on the on the grounds beer, right? Yeah. That was so, so, so fun, tell me about about what that was like because working on a on a beer project is. Probably like, <laughs> probably pretty up there in terms of uh, of fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was good. I actually didn't get to see Carlos too much uh, just because of the whole COVID situation, and then we moved into the bubble. But um, he worked a lot with Dylan together, our media guy, Dylan Lawrence. Uh, they came up with like all the branding for the can and all that stuff. And I seen well, I seen all the documents like what how where they came from, all the all the ideas that were put into it and then the final product was really, really nice to see that process. And um, yeah, and then Dylan, I mean, Dylan and I are good friends. I actually played against Dylan when he played for X and I played for CBU. So 
Um, I knew him for a couple of years, and then he got employed by the Wanderers a, like two years ago or three years ago. And he's a super good guy, and he always told me if you ever want to get involved or or just come in and look around and learn something, um, feel free. And then he came to the bubble with us. And uh, we had so much spare time there too. So I just hopped on the laptop with him and we started to collect some ideas and what could we do and how could we, how could we uh, yeah, put out that beer can in, in an advertisement for Instagram and, and for the Instagram story and other platforms. It was quite a fun process actually. I, I remember that day where we actually came up with the, the final slogan that we wanted to put on it. I think it was like three or four other guys sitting with me at the laptop, like from the team. I think it was Corey, Matteo, and someone else, and everyone was just throwing in ideas because it was fun. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's something creative. Uh, you know, everyone can throw their ideas in, and, and then we'll just pick one that we think fits the best. And uh, I mean, for me as a German trying to promote a beer, I think that's that's very fitting too. So, uh, no, it was definitely a fun experience, and uh, the beer is actually good as well. Yeah, so it ranks up against your, your German beers, your favorite German beers. Uh, not quite, but it's, it's up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, D- Daddy actually tasted the beer and he said it was good. I, I, yeah, I liked that it. You liked it I liked too the design it. on it, and I thought it was like super cool, like all the marketing stuff. And I thought it was super cool that the players like you were involved in it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I liked that. I think that was a cool story overall. Yeah. Speaking of uh, cool stories. Um, I just heard that, that Mert got signed as, as a player. Are you excited <laughs> to be playing with him? Uh, well, I would be excited to be playing with him, but that was an April <laughs> joke. But uh, when I seen it, I was actually like, wait a second. And then I realized, oh, it's April 1st. I wouldn't be surprised, you know. That guy's still balling out there. Yeah. <laughs> he's really good. He's really good. I really rate Master highly as a, as a coach, too. You know, he's, he's always there giving us, um, you know, like he's always good for like a, an extra opinion, you know, coaches, of course, coaches, lots of knowledge and uh, he's just always there to give you that little extra, extra push or extra piece of advice that, that you might need sometimes. And uh, I think they would work really well together. Good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does Stephen Hart get on the field with you guys too when you, when you're uh, in the practice? No, no, he, he, he juggles the ball. Sometimes you would play yeah. football tennis with us. Yeah. But that's about it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, football t- tennis is fun. I played it sometimes with Daddy, and um, it's just uh, really fun. So do you play in teams, or is it like 1v1? Uh, we usually play um, like 3v3s. Okay. Usually sometimes a bit bigger, and then, uh, you know, sometimes we have rest days, and then we put up the nets, and we play like a little tournament with teams of three. Uh, which is super fun. I love it. It gets so competitive in our team. It's like <laughs> sometimes more competitive than a, than an actual like game. By the, at the end of the at the end of the practice, <laughs> everyone just wants to win. It's it's really fun though. It's good. So have you been doing it like right now when you guys are back to training? Uh, yeah, we'd usually do it like maybe once a week. We'd have a rest day kind of where we go out on the pitch and we do stuff, but it's not like very high intensity. So it's a lot of tactics sometimes we do like shadow plays and stuff and then we just finish it off with some technical drills like coach will put some bins out and we'll try to hit the bin with the ball and then in the end we just play a tournament of of 40 tennis and uh, yeah i always look forward to that i love it i'm the man at the net all the time <laughs> <laughs> with the headers eh exactly yeah cool cool so um yeah, so in, in terms of, you know, the CPL um, in a league with such significant turnover, um, that's, a, that's one thing that, that surprised me. You've kind of become such an iconic Wanderers player. Like, it would seem like you're, you're like almost like Stephen Hart. You're like the Wanderers, right? <laughs> if, there was like, if there was like one player. And... On top of that, you've kind of really embraced the community. You've gotten involved in, in, in community events, you know, with uh, Bell for, for mental health and stuff. How did you get so involved with, with this community? Did that just come naturally? I think so, yeah. I think it just came naturally, honestly. Um, I think it's also 
a lot just came from that first year and just maybe the way I play. Uh, you know, very, very hard and, and you know, I love a crunching tackle every now and then and I know the, the fans uh, in Halifax, they go crazy for it. So, yeah, I think just my first year was really a big part of it and the first year was quite a journey for me too because I really just came in uh, like realizing that that might be my last chance to turn professional and I was just, uh, I wasn't even focused on playing time first. First, I was just hoping to get a contract Mm -hmm. And then just how that whole season developed for me and then wearing the captain's arm at one point and, and everything just went well. Um, I think that just gave me so much gratitude towards, towards the club, the community, the fans that I just always want to try to give back and, and try to take my time with fans and, and to sign autographs after games and just all that kind of stuff, which I really enjoy doing because I got... I, the community gave me so much and I just, you know, try to try to pay back in some way. And uh, maybe that's why there's such a close connection. Yeah, there's a such yeah, close a... connection with you and like the community. And yeah, you take the time to like sign autographs and you're always so friendly with all the fans. And I love it. And I actually remember um, in the inaugural season, like the last game that you played because you were going back to... Uh, uh, university. I remember I asked you to sign my bag after the game, and then you signed it. And oh, yeah. I always take my like it was on the my <laughs> like my backpack, so I always take it wherever I go. Um, so it's so cool just to have that like Peter Shella nice. uh, autograph on it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, that was that was a great experience. That game too probably made the uh, made a lot of that. Uh, you know, the, the the day when I left, my last game, the day before I went back to the CBU. Uh, where I was playing the drums in front of the fans and, and all that, you know, you build like a relationship with the fans and a connection with these fans. If you if you live through moments like this together, and I think we had some some really good games as well on on the Wanderers ground, where you just build a very close connection to to everyone in the stands. So, Halifax, like you've been to all the stadiums, like what what's the loudest stadium of of all? Definitely Halifax. That's not yeah. like Just by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think well, like I think Bala is the only team that had maybe some more attendance than we did. Uh -huh. But which is nice. I, I mean, it's very good for them that they have so many people coming out. But the stadium is just very big, so it doesn't feel like it's full. But the grounds are just it's it's so nice because it's uh, it's small. It was always like at capacity almost. And, you know, then, then you get that feeling of a full house, a full stadium. The kitchen is definitely the loudest, the loudest fan group in the, in the league, I would say. And, uh, yeah, the, the atmosphere is, is second to none. In the, I think the stadium is just so iconic, too, right close to downtown and, and how the fans can just walk from the pub right into the stadium kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, such a good spot. You know, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's perfect. So speaking of, yeah, speaking of Valor... Um, you know, some people have said that Valor and Halifax have been at a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of they didn't have the same kind of, uh, I guess, infrastructure to, to pull, like player pool to, to pull players from. Um, so now the Wanderers are looking at, at kind of developing what, like a, a under 23 team or, or developing m more players. Yeah. Can you? Can you kind of explain what's what's going on there? What's what's the thought yeah? So that? they what they what they basically start to do was um, just to pull up local talent together and train them together and uh, and I think it's it's a very good thing to do because once the lads turn 14, 15, 16, they're they're ready to bring like a core group of maybe the best players and and that that age group in the Halifax region or even Nova Scotia or Nova Scotia together and I don't know what it's going to look like I think what from what I've heard is that they maybe try to do like camps where they maybe train for two weeks and then they go play some games and then they do that I don't know maybe every six weeks every eight weeks but it's just good to introduce those kids to the environment and also from a mental aspect you you, you involve a kid into that Halifax under 23 squad at that point they know they are involved with a professional club in some sort of way and that that pathway is way way clearer than than playing maybe just in a local team and don't even know if, if Steven has noticed yet or Masson has noticed you yet and I think uh, just for that 
it's really good. It's like a step in between, so you don't you don't have to go from I don't know <laughs> suburban under seventeen straight to the Wanderers like Luke Green did pretty much, which is like a really good example. And I re- actually really rate him as a player, but um, you know not every player is able to do that. So there's that little step in between now where they maybe get like a year or two to show themselves on that level and, and develop in a more professional environment than they've been in before. And then maybe be able to make the next step or go on to university, but still be in touch with with the club and knowing that you have a player out there who's still developing, getting game time at uni and maybe be able to come back. Because we've seen how, how much U-sports talent there, there is in, in Canada. Yeah, U sports have been like producing great players like you, Corey, um, a bunch others. And yeah, it's great to see that. Like, I- I'd love to see like um, um, like an under 23 team for the Halifax Wanderers. And they've also partnered up with Soccer Nova Scotia like to um, like uh, develop like players that are over 16. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's looking bright. Yeah, I think it's I think it's also um, you know one of, one of the club's duties to to try and Im- impact the, the youth more and and try and and really give them that outlet and and tell them there is something there's a way to to become a professional in your hometown or in your home province uh, because they are the only professional club in the province and uh, who's who's gonna do it if not they <laughs> right you know? yeah for sure. So, what is what is U Sports um, doing well to to really help develop players? Um, well, or, I think, or, or, or how does that pathway how does that pathway help help players develop? I think it can help players in, in many many different ways. To be honest, for for my personal story, coming from from Europe, um, maybe losing losing touch to football a little bit at that point, and then. Just wanting to see something new. That, but that was my my uh, my drive to come over. I just wanted to like a restart, like a new country. I was I was a bit upset with my situation back home, and yeah, that I didn't even know that I was gonna be thrown in a situation like that in a country that just about to build a professional league. And I also had no idea that that CBU was uh, going to be such a good such a good program at the time, but. Um, I think what U Sports is doing great is just, uh, you know, the thing is with U Sports, there's lots of teams, and I feel like um, it's it's definitely easier to get noticed if you're in one of the better teams. Let's say maybe the eight teams that make it to nationals on a regular, or like one of the teams that make it to nationals on a regular. I think that's very important that you really present yourself on a national level. Um, but I mean, all the all the universities they have decent facilities. They have good coaches. They have uh, good players. They give they give players a chance from 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 their region as well to play on a on a university team, on a varsity team, and and to get that experience. And of course, there's only always a handful of players every year who will make it, who will make the step from the U spots into into uh, the professional leagues. But I mean, a handful is better than nothing. And I, th- I think uh, just for that, you should give U Sports credit that they produce some sort of talent that is able to go on and, and, and play professionally. Yeah, U Sports is doing great. Uh, and yeah, the, the players, I'm always amazed um, like how good like the U Sports players are. Like you, Corey Benz, um, Isaiah Johnson, I think also came from yeah. uh, C- like U Sports. And it was, and it just, U Sports is just doing great um, producing and developing young players. Um, and speaking of youth sports, how did it feel for you to be named to the all-decade team for the CBU Capers? That was definitely a big honor. Um, I don't think I realized yet how big that might be, maybe in, in five years or when, when they announce the next team, then you realize that uh, that's actually quite a, quite a big deal for the university and, and for me personally too. Uh, you know, I, I think... Um, you know, you always forget how much how much work they put in before I was at that university and before I was able to go there and help the program. And then eventually I was one of the first players from CBU or maybe the first player from CBU who went on to play professionally after. And, you know, I just like to remind myself of all the people that have built that program over 
the decades before. Because if it wasn't for them, the program would have wouldn't have been in the in the situation it was in when when I first came and wouldn't have given me the opportunities that that I that I got when I when I came. And uh, yeah, I'm forever thankful for for Coach Dino for for the whole program for university for the university. Uh, just had a great time, and I'm I'm definitely looking forward to to go back there at some point, maybe for for um, what we're always saying. We have the anniversary for our national championship at one point. I think after 10 years. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, I was going to, yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, we should have mentioned this a little bit earlier about the, the marketing, right? If some, if some business out there wants to get in touch with you in terms of marketing, what's the best way for them to reach out? Honestly, just uh, on, on Instagram is probably the easiest way. I have my, my, uh, Instagram page from the from the digital mark, marketing solutions and uh, my own private page to uh, people can reach out and uh, you know I'm not really right now I'm not really only in it for to make money or something I just want to learn too so if anyone wants to collab on something or, or needs help with something I'm always happy to to have a look and see what I can do okay cool yeah Sounds nice awesome. uh, and um just jumping back to the Wanderers real quick, I just wanted to ask you, which new player are you most excited to play with? Um, for me, there's a couple of players. Honestly, it's hard to pick. Uh, you know, I, players that will be around, close around me will be uh, Maury as a, as a right back. Uh, he's definitely a very, very good player. Lots of experience. Very athletic. Um and he makes very good decisions. I've been liking him a lot so far. Um, also a very good guy. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to be playing with him. And who's also impressed me uh, a lot is Jeremy, the new midfielder. I still can't pronounce his last name, but uh, I think we all know who I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, he's he's really good. Very experienced too. Uh, very good on the ball. I think he can really, really help the team to... Um, to be more solid in the midfield. I mean, last year we had a good midfield, but we had some losses in the midfield, so we need new players to step up, and uh, I have no doubt that he's that he's uh, capable of that. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, Jeremy play too. Um, so I also have a, another question um, for you about the Wanderers. Uh, who gives you the most satisfaction about stopping in training? Definitely Corey. <laughs> just, because, just because he's the fastest player probably in the league uh, uh -huh. plus i've been with him for the last five years yeah. and we're literally competing every day and he's also my roommate so if i get to stop yeah. him training i can laugh at him later <laughs> at home so that gives you a little extra satisfaction um, <laughs> now cory and i we're, we're like super close friends but also very competitive on the pitch and uh, it's it's very very good to have that relationship. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you out. also I guess you also have to be careful because if he if he gets by you, then you hear about it all night. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's either or because <laughs> I'm not gonna catch him. <laughs> and um, also, so um, so I think that there's gonna be a season uh, this season this year so how many goals do you think you will score in this season um well it depends how many games there are eh? but um honestly yeah that's one thing i that's one one part of my game i want to improve on um i want to help the team to to score more goals like of, of set pieces uh whatever it takes you know uh, i just want to get get my my foot in there and, and try to help the team in any way possible and uh, also for me you know it's, uh, it's it's a big part of the game scoring goals even though it's not directly my job, but it will help you stand out eventually uh, if, you, if you're able to help your team with goals. And I don't know, if I, if I put myself as a goal last year was if we played the 28 games, um, I would love to see myself at like six, seven goals at least. Yeah, I'm sure you can achieve that. So you still got that, you still got that striker in you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah that would be I'd rather aim high. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So so maybe you can give some tips on 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 heading. I mean, you know, heading is one part of the game where I'm actually absolutely terrible on. <laughs> you know, I think that that you know, in those set pieces, 
you have to go in with with a lot of aggression and just kind of like you've got to want to hit that ball more than the person that's that's marking you but i mean what do i know about heading <laughs> let's let's ask the uh you know someone who's actually good at yeah. it so so what um, are some tips on on scoring from set pieces or scoring from headers well like yeah you said like uh i mean defensively headers are much 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 easier because you just have to basically get ahead on it and try to get the ball out of a dangerous area. Mm-hmm. Now, offensively, if you're trying to score, you actually have to be able to get to the ball and put it into a specific area to be able to score. So that's the hard part about it. And honestly, what uh, most of it for me is, well, first thing, is the, the delivery has to be good, right? So I'm, I'm going to make, like, we have certain runs that we're going to do. And if I make my run and the ball is good, that then there's only the chance for me to score if the ball's not good or if the delivery is not right, then then I, I won't be able to get there. But we have good good uh, set piece takers on the team, so I'm I'm confident that the the corners will be good and the free kicks will be good. But um, it's for me, it's a lot about timing. Just you know, timing your run right because you wanna arrive with some sort of force. Because if someone gets in front of you, you wanna be able to still move that body out your way. Uh, while you're trying to go ahead the ball and then we just rise early and, and what I always try to tell myself and tr- tell my kids as well, the, the, the boys that I coach, like never close your eyes when you go to head the ball. And that's like a, a very common thing. I think that, that once the balls are really close to your head, that guys just start closing their eyes and I always try to keep them open and really, really? okay. just try to direct the ball in, in the, the area that's that's most likely to to beat the keeper and um, you know coach always says the coaches uh, gave me that tip as well he says always aim for the big part of the net so it depends where you arrive if you arrive at the at the far post you want to head the ball straight where it's coming from back into the far, far like let's say it's coming from this corner you want to just that's the, how you get the most power and accuracy on it usually uh, but if you arrive on the front post then you have a decision to make because you either just flick it on and try to put in the far post or really like Didier Drogba in the Champions League final in, in Munich a couple of years ago where he puts it from front post right into the top bin or the near post and uh, that's really hard that's technical and then everything has to be perfect but um, I'm not going to lie off, off, like heading the ball offensively is a, is a skill that's uh, not that easy yeah well, I bet so we're working on it we're working on it okay good <laughs> And also speaking of predictions, um, where will Halifax end up in the in the table this year? We're gonna win it. Okay. That's, I mean, we did. We went to the final last year, and we we've got the you know that's that's the only only thing that we can improve is to win it this year. Right. And yeah. That's what we're looking for. I mean, how's in the end gonna be? Who knows? But I believe in that team. I believe in our ability. I see what what kind of players we have. Even players like Alex Marshall, who has only was played on an injury last year and has only been able to show so much when he was still really good. But there's there's some players who have so much more potential than they've shown yet. So I'm I'm confident that we can we can go and, and win that trophy. All right. Yeah, I think and... I think you guys can too. Um, you went to the final, like you said. You've got all the players. You've got the coaches, and yeah. you guys have are like like last year. You gelled really well, and I'm sure you're gonna gel again really well this year. So I'm excited to see you guys back in action. Yeah. I'm really excited to go. Should be super exciting. All right, so so I've got For one sure. more one more technical question about defending this time. Okay. Um, so I was watching the uh, the the Champions League game with Porto. And one of the things they said before the game about Pepe is Pepe, who I think was like the oldest or second oldest player playing the Champions League. Well, what he does is he waits until the last minute to check his shoulder. Um, And the announcer said that oftentimes, you know, more inexperienced defenders check their shoulder too early and 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 then the striker makes his move. So it's kind of like a cat and mouse game. So why don't you tell me like how, how you make your, your decisions about that and um, like, like, how, like, like, yeah. like how you can kind of make sure you're marking the guy when they're, when they're making that run behind you. Because they're obviously um, trying to go on your, on your yeah, line yeah. side. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So 
what I usually try to do, uh, it's uh, like just come like I, I try to check my shoulders all the time, especially when the other team is in, in possession. And um, just, then there's, there's there's triggers for me where where I know, um, let's say, the other team's midfielder has the ball and he's under pressure or midfielder pressures him. So just by the way his hip is facing and his, his whole body stance is, I can now tell that he's not going to be able to play that pass into the striker because that, like there's there's no chance. He's either going to play sideways or backwards. He's not going to thread a, ball, a pass in behind. So those those moments, I just uh, I take my eye away from the striker and rather defend space than the man. But as soon as I see that someone has enough time, and obviously you get to know players as well, and if, if there's players with time and skill to play those passes, then I just try to to check my shoulder constantly. I try to listen to to Christian or whoever's in net who always communicate with me. I try to listen to to my uh, my other defenders next to me, and I also communicate with them, tell them where their players are, and. Um, then honestly, yeah, that's a, that's actually a very good point that uh, you don't want to, if you're in that situation, you don't want to check your shoulder too early because that gives a striker more time to adjust his run and then maybe completely fool you. But if you make it last second, then yes, you if you get it right, you'll have a good chance to win the ball. But when when do you know that it's gonna be last second? You know, like it's yeah. a very it's a very small, uh, a very thin. The edge you're walking on when it comes to that. So I honestly, in our back four, or I like to include the midfielders too because we communicate communicate a lot. Of like our back six or block of six, right? Is uh, we just rely on each other when it comes to communication and and uh, being a tight unit and uh, defending together. I think that's what made us really really strong last year is that we defended very well out of our defensive shape. Two blocks of four. I think the, the York game where we were men down at times, we were even two men down because Alex Marshall had like a nosebleed for ten minutes of the game. So we we're just two blocks of four defending against York, and uh, I've been watching that game back a couple of times, and it's just great to see the understanding we had of each other, and how we shifted together, how we defended, and how we were patient, and then in the end you get you get uh, you get the goal back, and and, get, and you deserve it. You yeah, know. yeah. It w- you guys in that game, it was like a defensive masterclass. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of coach's favorite game, <laughs> favorite games. He said that the other day that he that's that's the game where he realized that he's doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are some fantastic tips that you gave about the the hips and and checking your shoulder and the communication and all that. Yeah. So that's gonna really help um, help out young players. So. Yeah, appreciate so. those tips. Of course. And I was going to say, um, if, Dad, you don't have any more questions, we should move into the rapid fire. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and th- okay. I, I remember that we did lap- rapid fire last time, so this is a new rapid fire. Okay. Um, <laughs> so do you have a nickname? Uh, um, yeah, I have a couple, actually. So most most people call me Pete, but what, what really stuck here was uh, Pedro. That's my CBU nickname, which I still get called a lot. And uh, yeah, Pete, Big Pete, all those common ones. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, favorite genre for books and movies? Uh, biographies and documentaries. Okay. okay cool. um, one superpower that you'd like to have? Um, probably just the classic one, being able to fly. <laughs> yeah, flying would be really cool. cool. Yeah. I would think it'd be so cool to be able to like fly through a cloud. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, do you cook? And if so, what is your favorite thing to cook? Yeah, I actually do cook a lot. Um, right now, what I cooked recently was really good. Did you ever try the TikTok pasta? No, no I don't think so. Never heard of it. It's uh, basically you just put a like a block of feta cheese and then some tomatoes and some some I put some onions, some olives and uh, some olive oil uh, and some spices all together in a big pan and put it in the oven for 30 minutes and then it all uh, basically after you just 
and always say do you like mix it all up and then it comes to like a nice cheesy tomato sauce you just throw some pasta on that it's amazing and it's super yeah. easy okay cool nice. yeah, yeah. sounds good i think we should try that <laughs> like really soon um what is where is one place in the world you'd like to visit there's loads of places that i like to visit <laughs> i'd like to go home soon again to be honest that's been a while yeah okay but, um no, I think on the bucket list next is Mexico for me as well. I think I haven't been to Mexico yet, and I really wanted to go. I think that's a culture I'd like, like to explore a little bit. Yeah, right. I've I've been to Mexico. It'd be a fun place to go to. Um, yeah, Ma- and also, soccer. I saw on your like- I saw on your Instagram you like hot places, right? Yeah, yeah, I love hot places. <laughs> Yeah, and Mexico will have has like really good soccer players. We were watching the TFC um, versus Lyon game like a little while back in the Concacaf yeah. Champions League, and Lyon was just like pushing, pushing. It's a wonder that Toronto FC didn't lose that game. I bet, yeah, these guys are they're fit and they 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 can play and they are, they have desire down there and it's pure mm-hmm. passion and emotion. That's uh, that's definitely very vivid when you watch them play. Yes, for sure. Um, and what's your favorite movie or documentary? Um, that's a good one. Okay, if I go by movie, I think it's Seven Pounds by Will Smith. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And documentaries. Who? Uh, there's so many good ones. Honestly, I probably something with David Attenborough. Just okay. Planet Earth, the classic ones. Okay. Yeah, we saw that recently. That me. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, good choice. Um, are you a good dancer? Uh, I wouldn't consider myself good. I'm just a classic two step with a big smile on his face. <laughs> 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 and what was your first job? Uh, I used to deliver pizza when I was uh, like 16, 15. 15, okay, 16, that's yeah. cool. Little bit pizza back home in, in Cologne, yeah. That was my first job. Sounds fun. Um, and what job would you be terrible at? <laughs> Probably delivering pizza. I only lasted for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I, had an, I had an accident with my scooter. <laughs> and then I just quit after that. So, uh, yeah, that or like, honestly, any, okay. I think... I, I need to be outside and, and dealing with people and real life. I, I, I couldn't be, I close my door in an office for eight hours a day and, and shut myself from the, from the world. That's, that's not me at all. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. I don't like sitting around a, a lot either. And for eight hours, yeah, that yeah. just doesn't sound yeah. very nice. It doesn't. <laughs> and what's your favorite dessert? Um, I'm a big dessert fan. There's, I love ice cream. I love cheesecake. Cheesecake's definitely up there. All sorts of brownies. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the direction I'm heading. Yeah, uh, there. Yeah, I love brownies too. And just talking about food, like what you what do you cook and what's your favorite dessert? It's made me hungry right now. Um, <laughs> and what was the first concert you ever went to? Um. I haven't been to too many concerts in my life, but the first one's actually, uh, I think I was like 12. That was in Frankfurt. And uh, my mom just took me with my sister, my sister's friend and, and her mom. It was like a girl's trip, but I just ended up coming because I wanted to. And uh, it was the Pussycat Dolls. And I think the pre-act was Rihanna, actually, but she wasn't, she wasn't that okay. famous back then. She was just coming up at that time. Okay. Uh, yeah, Pussy Get Dolls and Rihanna. That's my, my first concert. There you go. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, what's your favorite animal? Um, dogs. Dogs? dogs? Yeah. Nice. Big dog fan. Yeah, us too. And this is my last rapid fire question. Um, so if you could visit outer space, outer space, explore all the oceans, or visit every country in the world, which would you choose and why? That all sounds very interesting and appealing, to be honest. But I think I would go with visit every country, just because I'm 
I'm a people person and I like to meet people and like to explore cultures. And that would be difficult in space or the ocean, right? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go with the countries, yeah. Yeah, it'd be very difficult to explore space and the ocean. <laughs> and yeah, it'd be really cool to visit like every single country in the world. And yeah, see, I, would, like, I would love to do that. Yeah, like all the cultures and all the different like traditions and the food. Exactly. The food, for sure. The food would be big. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see how many countries we can do. Hopefully, COVID is over soon, and then then borders are gonna open again, and we can actually do something again. Yeah, let's hope. Let's yeah, hope I, I, yeah, I love traveling. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite hobbies. So, do you miss that uh, all that travel from the first season now? All those long hours. Honestly, I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. I, do, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just. Just now that it's been it's taken part away. of it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like when when you're in it, then you're complaining, but but yeah. when, when it's gone, then then it's something you actually miss because yeah, it's just it's just exciting, you know. Like of course, it's tough on the body and and it's long hours and and everything, but in the end, it's it's also exciting. You go to a different city every two weeks in Canada. You spend some time there. You play games. It's also always nice to play away games. You know, there's there's a good side to both. Of course, I love home games, but being away sometimes is also it's also cool to play against the crowd, yeah, and all that stuff. So, definitely missing it. I, I can't wait for things to go back to normal and just being able to to play in all the season and and have that experience from the first year again. Yeah, yeah. At least, I... at least you're training again, and exactly. you know we're just waiting for the the new season to start. Yeah. yeah, and fingers crossed it ha happens like really, really, good. really, really soon. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, thank you, Peter, for coming on to the show. I really enjoyed talking with you again. Um, and yeah, I, I really hope that the season starts and we can watch you play again at the Wanderers Grounds. I hope so too, man. Sooner than later. And thanks for having me. I really enjoyed every time. So you guys do a great job. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It was yeah. our awesome. and thanks thank so you much for your insight. Cool. All right. You guys take care. Have a good day. I'll talk All right. to you okay. soon. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Bye bye. Bye. See you.